so basically as I'm working on this now you can see that we're getting um, like three kinds of colours you've got your light and then you've got your dark and then you've got your mid-tone so you've got your dark against light and then your dark against your mid-tone so it's dark against light dark against light and that's what makes it stand out so you, you do have to think a little bit about where you're going and what, you, what you're doing. And you do need to bring the contrast in very slowly and very gently. You don't, you know, you can do it before and you can do it after. It's up to you. But you do have to think about contrast because that's the thing that's going to pull your picture together in the end. Um, in the end, you'll need to look and stand right back on these large paintings and uh, drawings and paintings and think to yourself where where is it got to be and you know I need to make certain areas darker and lighter so that like, well, like we've said before so that you can send around the eye around the picture so um, yeah but this is all you do and you so you keep working at this and um, it, it will come along um, what, as I was saying, darker towards the centre because that's where the majority of the leaves will be. And um, so, yeah, so the light would be less where the branches are, you see. So uh, that's what's important as well. So, um, yeah. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of dark down here now to bring a bit of curvature into this particular trunk as it's going up the tree because it's... Uh, quite a fat trunk this one is and there's a great big leaf there so I will be filling that in a little bit different nice big black area there again draws the eye to that area people are wanting to see what's well what is it these kind of large drawings you have to be thinking to yourself what is it that I'm drawing you know what do I want the viewer to see and um you know what part is it just because it's a tree you know do i want it to look as it is as a as a whole yeah i do um so it fits in i don't particularly want this tree to stand out uh, more than say this building that's over here i do i do want the tree to to um sort of fade into the background but i also want you to be able to notice that there is a tree there so that it's not just all you know it's not how you always think it you know that's so the ones near the top will be a bit more sparing and a bit lighter um in color because they're giving the visual effect of like the further away and they will just be melting into the background um into the, it up there so yeah but down here, definitely darker. So now I'm going to go in with the cross hatching. I've gone in um, and brought it round with the stroke round this way. Now I'm going to be going back in with the cross hatching over the top, which will give it that even darker look. Gives it that old look as well. And then I want to come across here as well. Nice long strokes when you've got when you've got a large area to cover. Nice long strokes. So can you see now, although I've darkened this side as well, it's not as dark as this side here. So that's what I've done there. I want to be able to see that they're curved still. Even though the cross hatching is there, still want to see that it's curved. So like I was saying to you, dark against light and then you've got a mid-tone here and, and that's so you can still see look light mid-tone dark light dark mid-tone so do you understand what i'm trying to show, show show you it's it is important to get in that contrast So I wanted to join these trees up because I'm thinking that just here I might be putting 
um, a gate or a door um, as though leading into a secret garden. So then perhaps a bit of a wall coming round onto here, but I, I'm not sure about that yet. Um, but um, so I'm, one, I'm working hard now on these bits to try and bring in more contrast. And then also this tree is going to be joining into this tree because especially down Red River, um, when I'm walking down there, they literally are all intermingling with each other and it's it's quite nice. And to have these two nice big trees at the front of the picture, I think it makes it look quite attractive. So um, I'm just going in there and get, continuing with these lovely little squiggles and, um, and connecting some branches as I feel fit and just uh, making some connections here and there like I told you in the last video um it's it is important to it is important to bring in the contrast you know um if you don't you're just going to be looking at a drawing that's just going to be the same all over and um it just it just looks boring you know um you, you want some darker areas so it, yes it is important so yeah don't be frightened to put it in don't be frightened to go across more with you know bits of branches coming right over you just got to you just got to do what you think and enjoy and 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 what you what you think you know and i've got lots of um pictures i, I go down red river such a lot of times i take lots of photographs and i just keep looking at them on my phone and like thinking do you know what i like how that branch sits there so it's not always just about um you know just going in there and just doing this and doing that it's sometimes looking and thinking oh i really like the shape of that branch you know that branch is like really really nice and uh yeah and and so you might to take different branches from different trees and um and enjoy doing that that's another way right i need to bring in more contrast down here so i'm making these lines a lot thicker now over the area that I've already smudged in. Don't want to lose these leaves so I might blacken them out completely. So then the more again with contrast you see they're more noticeable. Right, look at that one there look you'll see it more if it's black. So very black down here amongst this bit this bit is kind of like a bit of a damaged part of a tree you know where you see them kids are or or for some reason or another have pulled back the bark and it's made it that the tree it's not going to do as well box all missing i want this to be a lot darker down here i'm just filling in these lines enjoying doing this picture um i know i say it all the time but i really do enjoy drawing especially with ink pen like this i forget that it's a pen that's in my hand i think that's one of the most important things if you're trying to do things really really precise yes it's nice to do that don't get me wrong um, but you need to do your precise parts perhaps in pencil until you get really good at it and then as time goes by You'll even start doing your little drawings in in pen in uh, straight into pen. Um, yeah, so I'm just smudging that in a little bit with my finger while it's wet. Sometimes I just wet my finger like that, and then it it it, it just spreads it round a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to go across in this direction as as the cross hatching. I'm pulling it towards me now. And it's kind of going more in the centre, which I quite like that. Instead of going right out to the edges on this, quite like this effect. Sorry if I go quiet, sometimes it's because I'm concentrating. It's not easy to talk and to draw. Okay. So when you look at that closer it is very cross hatched and I'm going to come down this way a bit as well 
I'll uh, bring you right close in soon and then you can have a good look at what I've been doing. Not easy to see it from this angle. So one thing I wanted to tell you as well, this paper is Fabio Fabiano paper. Um, I bought it on a roll from Jackson's. It's a very large piece and I've got a massive roll. It's a lifetime's worth of work there. This is a mixed media paper. And um, with these um, micron uh, graphic um, fine liners, the water-based, um, they are absolutely excellent because they work with you against the grain. So the grain of the paper is very fine, and um, but as you pull the pen across it very, very light, it comes across absolutely deliciously. And um, yeah, and, and it leaves the grain and it's, it's so beautiful to, to work with. Um, I'll see if I can show you close up how the grain, it, it appears itself, it's really weird. It's almost like, you know, when you was a child and you was at school and you did, and you did uh, rubbings of things, you know, you put a piece of paper over and you had big wax crayons and you put them on a wall and you rubbed over the top of them and you got the print or over the top of a leaf or things. It's the same sort of thing. Um, it does it with this pen, but it's very, very delicate and very, very fine. So see if you can see it. So here we are where my pen is, look. Um, I'm trying to hold hold this close up so you can see. The darker that I go, the more that these little notches and the natural pieces of little tiny bits of wood that's in the paper leaves these beautiful marks underneath. And it's just the grain of the paper and it makes it lovely. When you want to do it, um, darker like i want it darker down this side you literally all you need to do i'm going to just go under this a little bit because it would be darker underneath here um all that you need to do is to bring in bring it bring your grain and your strokes nice and long down like this nice and long nice and long But from up, right from up here, look. Can you see this close here? Look, that's just the grain of the paper, that is. So that's what we're wanting. Gives it a beautiful effect. But I'm not pressing on hard. I'm, I'm using it as a rubbing tool. And uh, the more I go over it, the nicer it's coming. Nice and dark across here. So if I go in next with a cross hatch across the top of that, that's going to really stand out. So this was my bit that was where the bark is ruined. So that would be darker down here. Um, sorry, I've gone quiet again. <laughs> so now that's just from doing the stroke coming down. So now I'm going to go back across this now to darken this a bit in the opposite direction, 45 degrees. And going over that grain again, giving it that darkness. And it's giving it that aspect of realism. Although this is a little bit, uh, also gives it like a, a sense of like that the tree is twisted because they're never straight, are they, trees? And that's what's important. So in here, let's have a little break, give my hand a break. And here's a close-up of how I'm doing these little squiggles. Just little marks, look. Little tiny marks. Bring them right across in front of the tree. And then remember, I'm just getting the general feel of the tree again. 
and then I should go back in and add more contrast I should show you a little bit of contrast here as soon as you start to go darker look because this branch would be darker underneath as soon as you start to go darker look it stands out more more light to look a bit smaller look towards the edge can you see see what i'm see what i'm doing and it's coming along beautiful liking it the bottom of this tree would be darker too and to bring it right down to here so here's a good way i'm just going to do some cross hatching here but again i'm going to use that grain so nice big strokes. This time I'm bringing it right across. I'm only pressing on light. And this is how it gets darker. All one direction. Now I'm going to go in just a little bit more on on the slant this way. And in fact, I'm going to go this way. I have to do it where it's comfortable for me. When I come from this angle, it always comes out a little bit curved but because I'm coming from this direction curves not a bad thing so I'm going to use that to my benefit so here you see you're going to get some lines that's going to be darker and some's going to be lighter Okay, so I want it darker still, so I'm going to now come down in a straight line. And I'm going to press on harder now. This part needs to be darker still. it's coming along but if you look closely now so we've got a grain going in a cross hatch going one way grain in a cross hatch going another way and then you've got a grain going up which is giving it a bit of a middle tone a mid tone just by rubbing that against the grain there and then as it works its way up I changed direction again and swept it round. So when you look at this from a distance now, it looks more interesting. Okay, so I'm going to continue working on the leaves on the tree and things. So, uh, yeah, all right, talk to you soon. So um, I decided... Um, after doing all these branches that I wanted to put in this little door um, I'm trying to do a door to a secret garden um, so um, I'm just taking this step by step I drew this one in lightly with pencil first
and then I moved on and then did all the shadings in and then I'm doing like round little pebbles and things for the wall that's going to be surrounding it and here in slow motion I'm showing you how you go up and down that grain again to create that lovely effect that it gives you um, it's a very nice feeling as it as you're doing it and you, you can hardly see what I'm actually doing but literally just the strokes you, we're after trying to make this look all as one rather than like at the top of the door there where there's like little bits of light coming through you want the shading to almost look complete so so here we are so far um moving across the large picture now and you can see now on the left hand side what little bit that I've done so obviously down at the bottom of the wall that's surrounding this uh, door stroke gate, um, the contrast will be brought in and more detail in that. But uh, you can see from the trees, the hard work that we've been putting into it. I've only done a little bit on one side with the leaves and things. I've got to go back in still. This is what makes it all exciting when you draw them because you're getting that outer lined work first and then you're just moving on in there and getting stuck in. It is really a big drawing, so it's going, it's a, it's going to take a lot of work. Anyway, bye for now.